When we look at the evolution, we start to find that, uh, I'll give you an example. Why do we have animals? Ah, because we started with only plants. Mm. I go, so why have, why have animals? The answer is very simple. What happened is this. Plants uh, breathe in carbon dioxide and release oxygen in the process of photosynthesis, right. you know, growing of the plant. Right, right. So I say, okay, you start off at a static balance place, so much oxygen, so much carbon dioxide. You put plants in the environment. I say, what happens? Well, after a short time, the plants use the carbon dioxide and add more oxygen. So over time, oxygen levels go up mm -hmm. and carbon dioxide levels go down. They say, well, that's okay. And I say, no, why not? Because if the oxygen levels get too high, guess what happens? A lightning strike, boom, the whole thing catches fire. Oh, oh. <laughs> so in fact, in our history, when there were only plants, it created an imbalance in the system. Too much oxygen in the environment, too much oxygen became toxic, it burned up, and life got lost. So you say, well, how can you have plants if you, if you keep getting too much oxygen? So you say, ah, Let's introduce animals. You say, what? what do you mean? I introduce a new species. I say, what do they do? Oh, they breathe in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. That's the complete complement to plants. But, but who's making plant these decisions? I mean, where's the um, evolutionary engine for um, that type of creation? I mean, we don't have to call it God, but where's it come from? It know? comes from stress. Okay. When an organism is in stress... It has to adjust its biology to survive. That's as simple as that. You don't, you don't adjust your biology, stress kills. That's bottom line. So I said, well, then an organism can change its genetics. And I go, yes. Uh, and yet in our history, in our story of our conventional world of sciences, no, you, you can't control genetics. Genetics are there. And if there's a mistake, we call it a mutation. But you have no control over it. Therefore, we have had the belief that, oh, well, life is driven by these accidents and mutations. I have no control. I could get cancer. That's an accident. Then I die. And, you know, that's the way life is. Now we find out, wait, that belief in genetics is not correct. There, there's another science called epigenetics. Yeah. And you say, well, that sounds the same. And I go, no, it's a revolution. And that's why what's happening right now is revolutionary. And I say, what do you mean revolution? I go, under the form of genetics, the belief was what we call genetic control, controlled by genes. I said, well, why is that relevant? Because people believe if they get a, a gene like the BRCA1 cancer gene, they're going to, I'm going to get cancer. If I get this Alzheimer gene, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get cardiovascular disease. Why? I'm inheriting the genes, and the genes control my life. Why? Because genes operate independently of us. Mm -hmm. and I said, well, what's the meaning of that? And I said, we're victims of our heredity. I'm culturing you to believe that you have no control over your life. The genes did it. You got cancer genes? <laughs> well, then get ready because cancer is coming. Like and the Angelina so Jolie situation, you know. Right. Awful. It's exactly. That's the expression of a belief system that says that your life is not under your control. It's under control of genes. And since I have the BRCA1 gene, says Angeli, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to be liable for breast cancer. So if I remove my breast, then I can't get the cancer. And, and she did that. And then only later then finds out, well, it's not just your breast because your ovaries and your uterus could have effect by the same gene. So then she went through and had her ovaries and uterus taken oh, out. Why? God. Well, those parts are gone. Now I'm not going to get the cancer. And, and that's based on fallacies and thinking